So here's a quick tutorial on how I did Cassia's Enter Chaos Laura Croft style logo. I looked on the web to see if I could make something look very, very similar to Laura Croft. So here I went to, say, the Tomb Raider design. And if you look really close, take a look. It's three dimensional. I'll go even closer. There is a gold and a silver area. Silver area looks like it's nice and flecky almost, like it's damaged, but it's hard cut metal. It's a reflection that's on there. That's why it looks like that. And then the gold's underneath with specific kind of shadow to make it pop a little bit. There's a bright area in the center that slowly fades and then it curves. But see, this font doesn't just curve a little bit. It's cut and bent by hand in Illustrator. So you type it out and then each letter you kind of warp. Then underneath, you've seen that it turns in 3D as well, not just 2D, because you'll definitely see a huge turn over here. I don't like that, so I don't do that. And there's almost nothing going over here for the curve. So it's Raider. It's kind of like Raiders of the Lost Ark coming at you. So then we have to find the font. And it's easy to type in Tomb Raider font. And in some places you'll find it, like Da Font and other places. They're free. It doesn't cost anything. But that's not really the font we're looking for. So eventually you will find the actual Tomb Raider font. There we go. Let's see if that's it. Yeah, something like that. So I eventually found the Tomb Raider font that looks just like it. Let's see, what's this one here? Hmm, not really. That's just her as a person. Uh, I think the actual Tomb Raider font was... Looks like it's here, trheavy.ttf. Tomb Raider Heavy. Looks pretty good. I think I can open that up into Fontographer and show you. Let's see. Or Font Expert on a PC. So, there we go. We can put Cassia. You know, where we can put Enter Chaos. And open that up a little bit more to see that a little bit better. There we go. Spacing's off a little bit in the font. You can see here and here, but you get the idea. So, again, that's trheavy.ttf probably find it in the web trheavy.ttf and there it is Ta -da. it's not very big works on a PC or Mac then you install it then you go to say Illustrator and here's more of a finished one for Cassia and I'll show you how it started out oops I'll show you how it started out over here so I typed in if you would enter chaos but I, what it ended up doing was if you look very closely each letter that I did let me zoom in a little bit each letter that I did I used a special warp function so on this you'll see on each one there's a type of thing that I added to it so in here you'll see free distort that I did it's over on the side if I open up free distort it'll show you so each one of these letters, I tried to make it match as much as I could the semicircle or the, the ellipse where I used part of it, the semicircle for it. So I just built a circle and I shrunk it down to what I thought the curve would look like. Then each one of the letters, I centered the Aeon Chaos and then I just did each one this free distort in appearance. And then you can change it like this until it matches. See? So I did that. It's not perfect. I did it for the S as well. And I did it for the H and the A the other direction. See? Just a little bit. And it started to bend. And her chaos is fine. Her name is fine. That's just centered. And you play around with the size. Now the next thing to do is to take the object or the type itself and create outlines. Now when you create an outline, you'll actually have this and you can ungroup it and take a look at each one. See? Problem is, when you have that as a single item, these are little dividers to make sure it was centered. Uh, when you have it like that, what we should have done is done an edge. See, if you do an edge and you change the stroke itself to a higher level, that's your background layer for Enter Chaos. See? So now, that's how you get the smaller and the bigger part and then maybe they touch. So in Illustrator what I would do 
is I would put two letters next to each other that would have already been next to each other to a point enter chaos etc like this off a little bit here and so you see the enter chaos stroke eight points I'm gonna do that for these two stroke eight points now if you move it over and let it touch eight's a little big but you get the idea and you have them touch like this now what you can do is you can go up a little bit bigger hope that they actually touch if you're going to connect them artistically it's your choice so let's say let's say that's a perfect connection it's not but let's say it is so we take all these and then we tell it to uh, object and then you can take the outlines themselves and yep, hold on a second perspective on what stored or there's still text yeah so now what you can do because now it's a shape is you can go to edit the object itself uh, let's see path there it is outline stroke so now the stroke itself has an outline but it's one object so let's just outline stroke on all these things path outline stroke there's no shortcut built in you can make your own but there isn't at the moment so now these all have an outline stroke but they're connected so if you object ungroup you don't really need this object ungroup you don't need this oops I mean I would move it I wouldn't delete it but here's just an example path outline stroke there oops and ungroup so now we have the outline itself and let's just say that's perfectly matched up it's pretty close not perfect but it's pretty close later on we can clean it up with some illustrator tools but now you have these three now what if you took all of those and let it overlap teeny tiniest bit tiny bit just a little bit right there it is now if you take all three of these and then you use your outline tools now if you go to your pathfinder which may already be here or you just go to window pathfinder to find it mine's already listed but if yours isn't we can go to Window, Pathfinder, it should pop up right here. And it was a, along with Transform and Align. So Pathfinder, we can combine them all together. Boom. Now it's one object. Now, let's take a look at that. Now we have inners and outers. So if we go to Object, and we look at the, the way it's been designed, we can go to Path, etc. And just take a look if we do, say, this. We don't want the other parts themselves, the inner parts. So it thinks that's all combined. Now one day way to do this is to go from the selection to the direct selection tool, the white or lighter colored arrow. Click on the edge of one of the letters twice. Delete it. Delete it again. It's gone. Double select the edge and do it one more time oops notice I kept this shape right here that's because we just want a background that connects the inter chaos together as one and then when we put the letters that we didn't delete but I did but we didn't delete and we put them on top so that's the idea that's your background 3d object and you export that so you can just copy that make a new item and create drop it in and you'll see that for enter chaos I like it exactly in place but if I'm gonna revert this real quick to show you I'm gonna take those letters revert zoom out take one the whole thing right there object uh, let's see type create outlines boom and object ungroup if you would there we go. I'm going to copy those and I'll show you how I did that. Boom. So, moving it back to where it would be centered, you can play with the, the width that you want, art, the artistic width for the 
edge for the 3D. So that'll be one background layer, and then in 3D you'll sort of see it like that. So if we export each one of these as a separate part, I'll cut this out, make a new one. And we call one TER, for instance. Uh, paste that in. Save this as. Now the thing is, for a 3D program, many times you'll have to save it as Illustrator 8 to simplify the way it's been saved, the, the language that saves the information. So now we save this. This would be the other one right here. And we'll save this. And we'll call it Untitled 2. We could call it TER. TER2. Or just red. Level 2. Actually, the background level 1. Level 1. Boom. Remember, Illustrator 8 will work for Cinema 4D, for instance. Close that up. Close that. Close that. Close that. No changes made. Now we go into here real quick and open the TER level 1. And this is TER level 2 we had. So let's open up level 2 to make sure it's the black one right in place. And there it is. So in a 3D program, what you'll see if you open TER level 1, connect splines, all that other good stuff, that's fine, boom, there it is. And then you merge TER level 2, connect splines, look what you got. You have two different objects, and now they're in 3D. And we haven't bent or rotated anything yet, so that's that's a whole nother thing. So that's enter chaos. So on both of them, you would probably just do a simple, well, I guess we can just do a simple extrusion on this one for now. I like to do the, the, the bevel, so it depends on how you want to build the original letters, etc. With that bend, you have to do it inside of Illustrator. It would be so hard to do it inside of Cinema 4D. So let's do a bevel. And then on the bevel itself, I have this down here. Boom. So we have that. I might need it to be like this. There we go. Notice something cool. When the letters come in, there's one, two, and three for the letters. And it's all one group. See? But it's really each individual letter that's been brought in. Unlike the item behind it, which we've done a really good job of mending together into one piece in Illustrator. More on that later. So I guess a simpler way to do this would just be to extrude and then put this down for the extrusion. Boink. Uh, actually flip-flop this way. There we go. Almost. These guys like this. And then this here. You'll notice on each one, if you do an extrusion before it, boom, like that. Each one can extrude like that together. Now, each one of them, it doesn't, it really shouldn't have to do that. It should, you'd be able to group it. But for now, I'm just going to show you an example how that's done. You could make them all one item that could be edit editable and do all this crazy other stuff which isn't the worst. You can just do this, these three, and you could make uh, objects edible. You could group the objects as one, then you could do an extrude onto that uh, beforehand, like this. Something neat to see here is that if I extrude, I could just make it do one path at a time. It's not really what I want to do. I want to do all of them at a time. So if you go to extrude, there's an option inside the object area here, hierarchical. Boom, it does it to all three of them at once. So let's take a look at this object. It's nice and flat. There's no roundness like there is in the Laura Croft font uh, rendering. So what I'm going to do is go to the extrude and go to caps. So start and end. Which one's the start and which one's the end? Let's take a look. None. So that's the start. End. None. And you can't see it, but that's the end. 
So we're going to go cap the end, and on the start, we're going to fillet. Show you how that works. It's really silly. Or you could just fillet cap. So that should be pretty cool. And point one. Boom. So what this is doing is, as you're doing this, it's making it come in or out from its original shape. So let's just do point one unit for the centimeter itself, or even less if we want. 0.05. So that's pretty good. That'll render. Uh, 0.075 should be the best. For that. Oh, not bad. Let's take a front view and see how close we are to the original. All right. So it's good, but I wish there was a little bit. I wish it went it went inward so we can tell it to try to do that inwards instead or constrain the actual position of it when we do that. So let's take a look. Constraining it makes it so it doesn't touch, it stays the original shape to a point. All right, so here we go. Also, it seems to be <laughs> a little bit long. So I'm going to modify this. Then I'm going to tell it, hey, you, basic coordinates right here, object, uh, 20 centimeters. Let's put it at 5. That's too long. Let's try 2.5. That's pretty good. Enter. Chaos. See? There it is. Now let's change the colors. Let's create a material of silver. So I'll make it kind of like a silver metallic. And reflectance and all that cool stuff we can do as well. So let's do Beckman. Let's bring that bump strength down. Reflection strength up maybe even higher, and less roughness. Looks, uh, that's a little too much. Something about here should be good. See that? Let's drop that onto Enter Chaos. And you'll notice that that little material now is on the side of our extrusion. So all things in the hierarchy are that color. Let's do the same thing and copy this extrusion and paste it. Control C, Control V. Get rid of our paths right here. Nope, nope, nope. And just put our level one in there. So now we have two of the same thing, if you look at it. Let's now make a gold one that's similar to this by copying and pasting. And let's open this up. And here, we'll make this more of a gold color. Orange, gold, whatever. Make it a little bit darker. Maybe here. Eh. That's good for now. So, when I copy and paste it, it to the original. It thinks that's the original. So here's the other one. Throw that onto our other extrusion. So now we have it. There you go. If you want, you can pull this back by hand. I would just go on the coordinate system. And if you look here on your position X, Y, and Z, right? So look at your zeta, your Z in this example. So minus 0.25 centimeters. Wrong way. Positive two five centimeters the other direction. Oops. <laughs> Point two five. There you go. Look at that. Well, now we have enter chaos. And let's render it real quick. So there you go. It's a little too reflective and the orange isn't quite right. But that's the idea. So we'll go here to the silver. Reflectance can go down a little bit. You can move this up to see more of the options. 21% uh, is good, yeah. Same thing with the gold. Or we just do this here. Double click there. There we go. There. And take a look at that render. Yeah, it's better. Not quite silver metal, but we're getting there. Uh, how about reflection strength higher on that? And the color could be darker. Oh, that was the wrong one. So darker, metal, and the reflectance up a little bit, and then fix that one. I made the reflectance way too high on. Oops, there we go. Go back there, let's take a look. Yeah, it's getting there. That roughness is still kind of not so great, but you get the idea. Now we can actually do a light. So we pull back a little bit, and we can do a light, a target light. There's the light itself. Here's the target. Change from 
its object to a world coordinate. Get a little closer. Light's a little high. Now go up here and take the target. And move the target itself right onto our object. As you can tell, the units that I imported weren't very good. I should have changed the units in Illustrator. But, you know, next time. There you go. Kind of getting there. Now the light itself. Maybe here. There. Okay. Just the light. There we go. Good. And the target. And the light. And the top view again, where we're at. See, look at that. That's really pretty. Let's look at that render. That's pretty cool. Now we go into here and change it to maybe. I don't know, HDTV, film video. That doesn't really matter. Anti-aliasing from geometry to best. You don't raise this up too much, it'll take forever, but nor does it really matter. So let's take a look at this specific area and render here after we set it up. And then open up until we get an HD image we're looking at. There. That's a 75%. Still pretty good. I'm going to pop it up to 100. So the render is starting to look nice. We need to see some uh, dimensionality behind it. As you can see that the, the rest of the 3D is not there. So I'm going to close this. I'm going to go here. And I'm going to copy this light. Copy paste. Now I'm going to take the target and move it just a tiny bit. But the other light I'm going to move this way. And then in the horizontal. Yeah. So I'm get a little backlighting going on there, hopefully. Should be able to see a little bit. Let's take a look. And let's change this to just average anti-aliasing. It'll render a little faster. So now we get some shadows. We can bump that up a little bit. And we can maybe expand it a little bit so we get some more back there. It depends on how you're going to do your lighting or your finish piece. So you get the idea. Now what I'm going to do is close this after I showed you how this is done and show you how the bend warping and some other stuff goes. So if I go here and show you the bend, how it's done, it should be down here. There we go. All right. So this is more of a finish and it's very thin the way I did it. Very, very thin and two different types of metal. Here's one gold material and you can see the reflectance levels that I did. And then the second level, you can see it's a little bit wider with a 1% fall off. It's very, very small. Both Beckman and the colors themselves and the luminescence itself. Now, if I go into here, I want to show you a couple different views of what's going on with this bend. So inside of here, you take a bend and you tell it how much you actually want the thing to bend the object. It's pretty straightforward. And I'm going to rotate this a bit so I can show you there we go yeah maybe I'll just do it here in 3d and I'll change that to a wireframe and that's fine yeah. maybe I'll just do this lines all right so the whole thing is on this cool little spline mask where I'm putting stuff together and each one of the paths, which I'll open this up. So I've got the letters and the background color itself. So that's a whole group. That's a whole group back here, that as well. So when we go to the bend, you'll see if I bend an item, how much it's bending. And go back up here to the amount of the bend. It'll tell us the object, size of the bend, the strength, how much I'm going to bend it, see there? You're going to run into some problems because these fonts only have a few points when they extrude. So when you bend, it's going to crunch. And the angle at which we want it to bend, which obviously we're going to keep it at 90. So let's, let's take a look at that here, for instance. There we go. So watch this. See? So it's just a slight bend. So you get that dimensionality when you render. And it looks really, really nice. Just a little crisp edge for that kind of a thing. So that's how I did that. I didn't want to bend it too much, but each one has its own layer. So I brought in chaos underneath, chaos above after I've outlined it, Cassio Walk Act, 
in Casio Box Echo on top. I changed the colors and I played around. And the lights just have a little bit of a dim that happened in the in the sides because I like it brighter on one corner going in. And that slight little fleck you see right there. So that's it. Next up, you bring it into Photoshop. And let me close this down out of the way. Nope. So inside of Photoshop, we're going to open up Casio's piece right here. And we're going to go to here, Projects, Design, Chaos. And let's see a PSD of that, one of them. All right, let's open up maybe this one. So there it is, playing around with the volcano in the background and stuff like that. Um, just different ideas Before, behind and in front of. So the idea is when you render that out, you render it out as a transparent PNG. So if it's a PNG, you can open it like this. Well, actually, here's a, a PSD of it. So you go into here. Now you have a bunch of different layers, which you'll see if I move this over here. So I have her picture and a brighter version. A little volcano going on with a mask. Then there's behind her arm with a little bit of a mask on the side, which you can see if I break that off and I move it around. I masked off her shoulder, right? Or I could have a little bit of a brightness that I've added to the whole thing with a glow behind it so it's got this nice ethereal feeling then it's in front as well and that's transparent the whole thing is that's the way it was saved in the 3d program it's got a little brightness there you can play around with it and then i put runes and other things in the background that faded out which of course like i said you can play with where it fades out so that's basically the idea on the other ones that i did i did another character the same person where i had this type of thing going on, right? And then as a finish, it would look like this, but I faded it to her and changed the color to match. Same thing, just trapped the face in, three, in 2D and you can see it moving a little bit on top of her hair there. But just different ideas on how to get it done. That's how it's done.